And this presentation is on lacrimal gland surgery and it's going to take around 20 minutes. Uh, now I shall start by a quick touch on the anatomy and I am here repeating that the lacrimal gland is drained by its canaliculi, uh, the lacrimal ducts. These ducts pass from the uh, deep part, the orbital part through the papillary part. And in this way, excision of the uh, papillary part deprives the gland from uh, passing its secretion into the lacrimal sac and the drainage system uh, known to all of us. The lacrimal gland with its ducts or ductules and uh, the uh, tears circulate in the conjunctival sac and be drained via the drainage system. And this is simulated to a sink where the taps uh, are simulated to the lacrimal gland. The sink itself is the conjunctival sac <clears throat> and the drainage tubes are the drainage lacrimal canaliculi sac and mesolacrimal duct. Uh, the lacrimal gland is divided into a deep orbital lobe and a superficial palpebral lobe. And the palpebral lobe may protrude through the uh, conjunctival upper fornix. Uh, and the, uh, the, letter, the orbital lobe is deep inside with the landmark between both at the lateral edge of the reflected uh, levator palpebrae superioris. And the innervation of the lacrimal gland is both sympathetic and parasympathetic. The parasympathetic is via the ciliary ganglion and the sympathetic is via the uh, small uh, fibers around the lacrimal uh, artery. Uh, first, surgical technique is the lacrimal gland exposure. And we expose the lacrimal gland through a lateral skin incision that looks like an S. We call it an S incision or a lazy S incision. Uh, the name is because we relax the shape of the S. Uh, on incising the skin and the fascia, you can uh, then expose the muscle, which is the temporalis muscle if you divide it you can see the periosteum of the lateral orbital wall externally. And if you divide it, you can see the bone. And if you separate the periosteum from the bone, you can go into the uh, superficial deep, uh, the, the uh, I'm sorry, the anterior part of the deep orbit so as to expose the gland. Here, this is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, maybe I have to, mute the uh, volume so that I can talk. Here, the upper lid is retracted. And the incision is made at the uh, upper, of course, not for mix at the upper part of the lid and then incising the muscle and the sub uh, or orbicularis periosteum is dissected so as to reach the orbital rim, the bone. Here, the periosteum is being incised. And after incising the periosteum, you can see the white bare bone and then by the periosteal elevator, you elevate the periosteum to go into the extra periosteal orbit. By blunt dissection, and then you can inject the gland. If you open the periosteum now, you can expose the gland and you can differentiate from the extra uh, conal fat. So this is the technique of uh, exposure of the lacrimal gland. And through this technique, we may do biopsy, we may do excision, we may do repair or prolapse. Uh, and finally, we are going to uh, describe lacrimal adenitis. Uh, lacrimal gland biopsy, uh, is indicated in masses other than prolapse. 
in cases of uh, ambulant adenitis, uh, not responsive to treatment, especially if associated with uveitis. Now, this is the, uh, again, I am sorry, I have to reduce the volume. Now, it's the same technique that we described a few moments. And then we come to incising the periosteum, taking out the lacrimal gland. As you can see, this is the uh, fat and the gland separated from one another. Dr. Abdul Rahman, the view is clear and the surgery is clear. Everything is clear, Dr. Abdul Rahman. Okay. I did a small trick like this, that I'm going to open my mobile phone as a participant, not as an admin. I don't know if I have my mobile phone, why I'm sorry. 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 لا عندي هنا واضح يا فندم الفيديو شغال والفلو كويس جدا شكرا دكتور عبد الرحمن العفو يا فندم العفو دكتور شريف as you can see here we are exposing the lacrimal gland and some of the uh, fat the extra coronal fat now what you are exposing here is the orbital loop so if you take a part of it cauterizing the rest so as to avoid bleeding will not uh, lead to destruction of the ductules simply as the ductules as we said pass uh, through the superficial part so you are not interfering with the site where the ductules pass from the gland to the conjunctive now lacrimal gland excision uh, is indicated in cases of lacrimal gland tumors. You remove the gland as a whole in cases of lacrimal gland tumors. And the complications of excision of the whole lacrimal gland are logically keratoconjunctivitis sicca or dry eye. However, when we remove the lacrimal gland, we are not confronted with this complication. Uh, simply, as you know, that the basal tear flow is from both the main and the accessory lacrimal glands, and the accessory lacrimal glands can maintain a stable tear film, and in this case, no dry eye occurs. Uh, these are presentations of uh, the different stages of uh, approach to lacrimal gland and excision, the lazy S, as you can see, this is the lazy S incision, and then exposure of the periosteum, opening the periosteum, taking the gland out, cauterizing it, and finally closing the skin. This is the lacrimal gland when it is taken out from the incision. And then we come to the common condition of lacrimal gland prolapse, and etiologically, the lacrimal gland prolapse originates from the essence of the ligaments that are uh, suspending the lacrimal gland to the periosteum of the lacrimal impression. Take care, the word lacrimal fossa is the one we give to the uh, site of bone that lodges the lacrimal sac. But the site of bone that lodges the lacrimal gland is called the lacrimal impression. And when there is the essence between the uh, gland and the periosteum that is weak, ligaments, the gland may then uh, be uh, prolapsed. Uh, it may occur as well in cases of trauma where these uh, ligaments uh, are uh, severed, and it may occur as a simple aging process. Uh, how to diagnose a case of lacrimal gland prolapse? It is a mass, here's the mass, seen on the lateral side of the superior fornix, a mass 
MS proven by uh, histology to be a normal lacrimal gland, okay? This mass feels firm. It's more circumscribed than the surrounding uh, tissue. It's not tender, it's sharply bordered and easily reducible. It's, it, uh, if you compare it to uh, lymphomatous mass, for example, a lymphoma is not reducible. It is firm, yes. It has a rather less sharp borders and sometimes it is tender. So a mass in this side, that is the upper lateral fornix, uh, it feels firm, circumscribed with sharp borders. It's not tender and easily reducible. And as we said in the lecture on blepharoplasty, uh, when there is marked herniation of fat, you might be confused with the gland. You have to identify it and detect it intraoperatively uh, and uh, reduce it. Uh, this is when we expose the uh, lacrimal gland, we can differentiate the fat from the gland. The gland is clear in appearance and the fat is uh, yellow. We reduce it and on reduction, we transfix it. That means take a sort of a mattress suture through the gland and then a mattress suture through the periosteum and then reduce the gland so as to come uh, to its place, uh, go back in its place where the uh, gland can be fixed in the lacrimal uh, impression. Another technique is to make two drill holes. I'm reminding you here, we transfix the gland, we transfix the periosteum, and then we approach it both so as to fix it to the periosteum. Now, the second technique is to make drill holes in the bone and uh, take uh, multiple uh, bites, take multiple bites into the lacrimal gland, imbricating it all around so as to fix it into the border uh, by drill holes. Uh, drill holes here have a more definitive fixation rather than fixation to the peri periosteum that may relax with time. The third technique is to make a suture between the lateral board of the uh, levator palpebrae superioris and the periosteum. Uh, this is, as I said a couple of times, is the landmark between the orbital lobe and the palpebral lobe. And you, if you approach them both uh, and take a suture, you are repositioning the palpebral lobe into the impression in the upper roof of the orbit. And here, exposure and suturing so as to get the gland back. The final point here in this lecture is uh, lacrimal adenitis. And first, we are going to describe the etiology of uh, lacrimal adenitis, that is inflammation of the lacrimal gland. Inflammation may be uh, infected, caused by viruses, bacteria, fungi, and parasites, or might be autoimmune or due to neoplasts. The viral adenitis is the commonest among all types of adenitis and among uh, infected uh, adenitis. The commonest is Epstein-Barr uh, virus, the one responsible for infectious mononucleosis, as you know. Less common viral cases uh, occur in adenovirus infection, varicella zoster, herpes simplex, rhinovirus, cytomegalovirus, and mumps. Bacterial infection occurs with saturative bacteria like staph and strep, uh, especially the methicillin-resistant strains of staphylococcus, and it has been reported in endemic areas to occur with tuberculosis. Fungal and parasitic infections of the gland are rare. Autoimmune disorders like Zwigerian syndrome, IgG4 related disease, the one that we used to call uh, orbital pseudotumor, 
sarcoidosis, as well as in thyroid eye disease. Neoplastic causes like lymphoma or adenoid cystic carcinoma or pleomorphic adenoma are again causes of the etiology of lacrimal adenitis. The treatment. In viral cases, these are self-limiting. You observe and give symptomatic treatment like uh, emollients, uh, lubricants, uh, sedatives, and uh, painkillers. Bacterial condition needs systemic broad spectrum antibiotics and once an abscess is formed, should be drained. Uh, autoimmune or idiopathic cases require oral corticosteroids. Refractory cases resistant to treatment may require orbital radiation or monoclonal antibodies or uh, uh, anti-mitotic drugs. You may take biopsy for a good diagnosis to make sure this is not uh, uh, masquerading a condition of uh, mass of a tumor. Uh, close follow-up for orbital signs is important in all orbital diseases to avoid compression of the optic nerve that may cause a drop in ocular vision, uh, pain with motility, a relative afferent pupillary defect or abnormal color vision. This is very important. What are the complications of lacrimal adenitis if left? Um, there is no published, <coughs> sorry, no published enough data on viral adrenal adenitis to give us idea about the complications of this condition. However, some cases have been reported to cause doses and some uh, may cause a measurable decrease in tear production, but not clinically significant. This is an example of adenitis uh, diagnosed as being caused by sarcoidosis, and this is the effect of uh, steroids. Thank you very much. And uh, ready for any questions.